Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Uh, today I want to go over the project for uh, the Deep Forest, which is the track I released yesterday. Um, if you haven't heard it, uh, listened to it already, uh, you should definitely listen to that before you get back to this video, otherwise it might not make sense. Um, but without further ado, let's actually look at the project file. Alright, so here is the project file. Um, this is my standard template, as you can see, uh, we have the standard uh, six groups that I work with and then the, the helpers and the outputs um, Not much has changed on my template and um, Yeah, let's actually get into some of the interesting things um, So I'm going to open up the drums and look at the kick uh, many people ask for my, my kick and bass and How I do my kick and bass and personally for the kick. I keep it very very simple. I just use a sample um, I don't make my own kicks. Uh, I don't enjoy doing that and every time I do um, the process tends to, to result into a kick that I don't really like. Um, so for my kicks, I almost exclusively use this sample pack here, which is um, the Ultimate Sidetrance Sounds Volume 1. Uh, I believe this free pack, um, if you Google it, you'll probably find it. And for this particular track, I use the number 7, uh, which sounds like this. A uh, very nice, clean kick, uh, no noise there. And I did a little bit of an EQ there. Um, I have the utility on there. I also have this compressor, which isn't actually doing anything. Um, the reason why this is here is that it, um, by default, uh, anytime I make an audio track, it opens up uh, with an EQ, utility, and a compressor. And in this state, it's actually not doing anything because it has a sidechain input, but it has no input selected. So it won't react to anything. Uh, it's just on there, so I can quickly sidechain anything if I need to. Um, so that's the reason why that's there. And then finally we have the filters, which I've shown off before on this channel. And you can see throughout the track that there's various low pass filters as well as some high pass filter stuff going on uh, right over here. Um, so for my kick, as I said, I keep it simple. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time working on the kick um, because I have um, this pack, which has almost all the kicks that I ever need. Uh, I just grab one of those. Um, I do spend a little bit of time on the bass. Um, here, as you can see, this is actually one of the few times that I haven't broken up my kick and bass or my bass sound in the on beat and the off beat uh, bass line. Um, and that's because this kick is fairly short. So the overlap here is a little bit present, but it's not really there. And it kind of just worked out well. Um, so this is my, my standard patch, it's the version number one, which I've shown off on my channel also before, but I'll give you a quick rundown. Um, basically, this is just generating a saw wave uh, together with that uh, kick attack here. And this is doing the volume um, for the, the saw wave, then we have the filter cutoff here. And then this is going through that noise, and that's everything there is to it, um, except that the velocity is also... Um, doing these two things here, the, the volumes. So it's velocity sensitive. And then finally we have this compressor which is turned off. So not really doing anything. Uh, then we have the utility to make it mono just in case. Uh, we have BX subfilter, which I've started to use less and less um, because it introduces just too many um, phase problems for me. Um, but for this track, I still use it because um, yeah, I didn't really care a lot about phase when I really started this track off. This is a little bit of an older track. I think it's like three or four months old uh, now that I released it. Um, then we're going into uh, the multiband compressor, which is just doing uh, basic compression here. As you can see, I started off with this master dance uh, preset, which I use very often, not only on my master, uh, but also on other uh, channels like this, like the, my bass. And then finally here we have um, Auto Dynamic EQ, which is Dynamic Equalizer. And um, yeah, that's, um, that's, if you look at the, the bands here, you can see it kind of reacts to it. It's a little bit too slow to actually show exactly what it's doing um, because I'm recording that the frame rate isn't optimal for these plugins. Um, but it's basically boosting it. Um, the more the frequency is there, it's boosting it more. So it gives it kind of an expansion effect on that click there. Kind of like a transient shaper, but for a specific frequency. 
Um, so that's the whole thing. As you can see, I turned off the limiter for this thing. I don't really remember why this, again, this is three months old at this point. So um, it's, I don't really remember exactly what I was thinking when doing this, but this is turned off so you can ignore that. Um, one interesting thing here is that I decided to add some a click layer, which is something I usually don't do. Uh, I normally just tweak the patch so that it's a little bit more clicky if I want some extra click. But in this case, I decided to just add a tiny click. And this also started from um, the, the, the standard patch and then just kind of with a little bit of stereo spread, um, an EQ here, and then um, I guess reducing the width a little bit again to kind of keep it in control. Um, and the, this particular EQ curve seemed to work well. And those two together sound like this. So fairly clean uh, kick and bass there. Uh, then again, this goes through my uh, filter rack here, which is just a rack with a high pass and a low pass that I've set up. Um, it goes through the utility, which is again doing volume. Uh, sometimes I kind of want to turn the volume down a little bit. Uh, so that's why I use that for. And then finally we have LFO tool here. And this is just there to remove those phasing things that I talked about before, the, the post ringing from BX subfilter. You can see how there is this extra little bit here, which is caused by BX subfilter. And um, in this case, I decided to, uh, that I like the sound of BX subfilter so much that I just, you know, cut it off like this. And that also works nice. So those two together sound like this. Now keep in mind this is going through my mastering chain, so it's a little bit louder um, than it's you know coming out of these tracks together, but there's not much more happening there. Um, so that's the kick and bass. Um, I can show you the intro, but I've already talked about the intro in uh, one of my past videos, which I will link up in the um, the corner if you want to see that I talk about how I make this in intro as interesting as possible so that when people turn it on on uh, Like Spotify they don't you know listen to this part and then click away um, So a quick rundown what I did is mainly mainly um, Played with the, the timings here you can see there's these little pauses here here and here which kind of extend the intro a little bit and um what I also did is um, when I first worked on this track, what I decided to do is have this uh, bass tab um, two bars into the drop. So the drop starts here and then we have this uh, saw tab here, which is just a super saw playing a stab. As you can see, one saw wave here and that goes through a, uh, a winding plug and then I have a spectrum to check some things, an EQ, and then we have the reverb that really makes the sound. And then it goes through the delay and it does some auto panning. So that's that sound. Um, I really like the position in the drop here, um, but I also wanted the intro to start with this sound because it's a very interesting sound and I wanted to use that. Um, so with these little pauses, I could have just added one and that would sync it up with um, you know the start here. You can see that it's synced here, but I decided to add two more so that it kind of works well. And it's a little bit longer, making it a little bit more interesting. And um, yeah, it just worked a little bit better with the, the timing that way. Um, so that's why there's a little bit of these, these pauses here. And um, that, again, that makes it a lot more interesting. So that's that. Um, then the other things in the intro, which is actually fairly important are um, is this effect here? I have this very the the song the deep forest is obviously based around this this thing in the forest where you go and, and and find yourself in nature that kind of theming there. So to emphasize that theming, which is really important that you do that, um, you know having a theme to your song really makes it recognizable. Um, so to do that, I decided to add a lot of bird calls everywhere, which are just from the the cashmere pack, I believe either from the cashmere pack or from um, old computer music sample packs. If you don't know, computer music is a magazine which I used to read. Um, so yeah, it's stuff like this.
that kind of stuff just makes the track a little bit more interesting. It kind of sits in the background, uh, but you can still hear it. Um, we have another one over here, which is this sample here. As you can see, it's a little bit of a weird sample. I think I might have stretched this thing at some point. Uh, I don't remember it being uh, this, but it sounds cool. And I just added a little f filter on it so that it kind of opens up towards um, where, you know, all the other instruments like the, the bass here and this bad sound as well as this impact kind of play. Um, so that's that. Uh, I'll show off the other bird noises as well in a little bit. Um, but I wanted to focus uh, on the vocals for now, which um, are very important to the intro. Um, obviously, it sets the theme. It's kind of tells the listener what the track is about, what the, the theming is. And um, I'll quickly go over the processing, but there's a lot of stuff going on here. Um, so it might be a bit hard to follow. I started off with these uh, lower harmonics here, uh, which I did pitch, as you can see, up three semitones and also time stretched all of them so they fit nicely with the, the grid of the, the track here. And um, then there's a whole bunch of different parallel processes going on. We first have an EQ here, which is just on one track, not really that interesting, but that kind of brings the dry sound in this particular frequency area through a little bit more. And then we have three different vocoders um, on there. These last two are hard panned and a little bit lower. Uh, this one is a little bit lower in volume and this is a little bit higher. And then this one also has an EQ and some stereo width to it. Um, then it goes into another stereo winder to make it really nice full sound. And then it goes to the utility which is on their standard. Uh, I think I don't think I use this for anything. Um, at, at, at any point, I mean, obviously it's not doing anything now, but uh, sometimes I, you know, delete an automation and it just remains, but I don't think I actually use this. Um, but with that being said, it's going through an EQ, which is just getting rid of some of these frequencies. And um, the reason why I'm removing particularly these frequencies is because I have a higher layer, which I'll talk about in a little bit, which kind of comes in and, and does stuff there. Then we have a reverb. Uh, which is very short um, so that just adds kind of like a dimension expander effect to it um, instead of more like a reverb thing um, also the, the stereo is taken down because the signal is already very wide so i didn't want it to be overly wide otherwise it wouldn't be uh, mono compatible and then i decided to boost the, the gain a little bit so that it hits at zero right here um, that way i can easily make it or mix it by just looking at this thing, obviously, as well as listening. And then we have the sidechain for this one. Um, so that's that. Then the higher layer is a little bit less interesting. Um, this is what that sounds like. This is kind of on top of it. Didn't really let you hear the other one. Uh, the other one sounds like this. This is doing the main sound and this is just kind of there to make it more understandable. Otherwise, if I play it without it, um, you can hear. Yeah, that's the same as what I just showed. It's it's not really easy to understand it. Um, so that's why I added this layer here. It's just me whispering the same thing as I said um, here, but it's slightly out of time. So together it sounds a little bit like you know how in uh, horror movies they have like, sometimes they have like voices which kind of sound out of time, but they are saying the same thing. I was kind of going for, for that effect there. It's really subtle. Uh, in some places it's very noticeable, like when you solo it, but in the track it's uh, hardly noticeable, but it's still there, kind of, you know, providing a little bit of extra uh, stuff there. Uh, for example, here you can see it's very obvious that it's there, but it's not very loud there in the context of the track. Yeah, you can hear that here it's really out of time, but that kind of gives it a little bit more character in my opinion. Um, so that's that. 
let's finally go through the, the main processing here. Um, first, I compress it together. And then it goes through M transformer, which pitch shifts it down and adds like another pitch shifted layer under it. Um, because of the dry wet, it kind of mixes it in a little bit. Uh, that gives it a little bit more body and makes it um, sit nice in the mid range. Uh, then we EQ it a little bit and then it goes into an OTT. And finally, we have some final effects like the, the big delay and the reverb and then another side chaining. Um, for some reason, I side chained twice here. I don't know why that what that's about, but uh, it must be right. Um, for this delay, what I often do is when the I have like the delay here, uh, I'll just turn it on on the last like syllable or the, the the thing I wanted to repeat, and then I turn it off as soon as the next uh, you know segment comes in, so that it's a little bit uh, more understandable when it actually plays. It will just repeat this last bit instead of repeating the whole thing. Um, so that's a useful tip to kind of get a little bit of a cleaner vocal there. Um, so yeah, that's mainly the, the, the segments for the intro. And then of course there's some effects everywhere, um, like background pads, uh, intro leads, that kind of stuff. But that's not really interesting. Um, what I do want to show now is the, the main lead here, which is this one. I'll play it from here because this is the more interesting bit. Um, as you can see, I turned this off to kind of experiment with it. Um, what it actually sounds like is this. But actually, let's look at the patch because it's a very interesting patch because it's very, very minimal. What's going on, as you can see, is I just have the SSQ waveform, which is kind of like a staple in Psytrance. Um, it has this very clicky, gritty sound to it. And I use this both to go out to the, the filter as well as to FM a almost a saw wave. It's not a perfect saw wave, but it's, it's there. And uh, this is also going through the filter and they go through the filter together, get filtered, and then they go out of serum because there's no effects, nothing going on there. Um, then that goes through the EQ, the auto pan, the delay, and that kind of stuff. Um, but what I wanted to show you mainly for this uh, is that I use the filter mix, kind of like a, um, a low pass filter. Um, there is also a low pass filter on the, the patch itself here on the EQ. Um, but what this is doing is it, it kind of opens up the sound a bit more when it's filtered. So you can hear the difference between this. It, it, the uh, um, the bandpass filter is now completely closed. If you look at the graph, you can see it's completely closed off. And once the, the filter kind of comes out, this also opens up a bit more. And now we have some more of those high frequencies, uh, which makes it stand out on the mix a little bit more. It's a really subtle effect again. On the solo track you can hear it, but um, it won't be very noticeable in the track itself. But it, it, it's kind of those those details which kind of make, you know, um, like the lead stand out a bit more once the the hi-hats and stuff like that and the clap kind of come in. Um, that really helps it stand out a bit more in the mix. Um, so that's the main lead. Again, as I said, very simple stuff here actually. And then we have another supporting lead here. which kind of subtly sits in the background of uh, behind this one. It's also a lot wider, and this is just a standard uh, saw way through a band pass. As you can see, nothing crazy going on. I just have this macro set up, so it goes through the band pass, and that goes through wider, then it goes through an OTT. Uh, then I'll limit it, and with this limiter, I'm changing the ceiling so that it has less volume in the second segment where the other lead is a little bit less loud. Um, so instead of just turning down the volume, I limit it a bit stronger. Uh, then we have this EQ, which does filtering as well as volume here. And then finally we have delay, reverb and uh, sidechain. So that's that. Um, I also was planning on talking about this lead here, but I've already done a tutorial on this exact lead. Um, if you remember my, my complex lead tutorial, this is a long 
a long time ago. I'll link it up in the, the top um, cards thing, uh, if I remember. Um, but this is, uh, I don't remember if I copied over the exact melody, but it's the exact same patch and the exact same effects uh, as the one in that video. And it sounds like this. I'll play the, the non-filtered version. Uh, I do believe one of the, the more interesting things going on here is that I have this little stutter effect here, uh, which is done with LFO tool. Um, that kind of comes in when all the, the, the reverb tail also comes in. Uh, again, I've talked about this reverb thing uh, in that tutorial. Um, so if you want to know what this is all about, then you should watch that. Um, so that's pretty much uh, the, the lead sounds here. Now, um, one thing I kind of wanted to point out is that the kick and bass are doing something different in the second drop. Um, you've probably already noticed if you've listened to the track, but we have this new pattern here, which kind of briefly comes in for the break as well as the, the first part of this drop. And then we go back to normal four on the floor with the, the 16th notes in there. Um, but this is kind of a way to break up the track a little bit, make it a bit more interesting. Uh, it sounds like this. Also has that nice double kick in there every so often. Uh, that gives it a little bit of drive as well. Um, then again, um, talking about the theming, what I wanted to point out is again, we have all these bird noises here. Um, I'll solo them for you. Uh, we also have this elephant noise, which I kind of chopped up. Uh, I just, just did this manually, kind of added a transgate effect, but just with the fades. And that makes it sound uh, a little bit more interesting. Again, it's these small little details which make the track very interesting. Um, we also have this sound here. As you can see, this is from the Cashmere pack as well. Um, I don't think this one is, so because it has a different name. We also have this one here. It's a bit more exotic sounding, which is also really cool. And then the final one is this eagle thing here. Kind of a screech as well. And they, again, are used to, you know, help the theming of the track and make the, the, the track really feel like you're in the forest, uh, which is what I was trying to achieve here. Um, so those are the uh, most of the effects. Of course, there are other effects sprinkled in. We have some risers, downlifters, impacts, that kind of good stuff that just helps, you know, the track transition from one segment to the next. Um, then um, there's not really much more to talk about. Um, well, the one thing that's also in here is these vocal things that I made. Uh, for example, we have this one. And this is just a recording of me uh, singing this whole long note here. And um, yeah, by just playing it at two different pitches and just filtering it, a bit of OTT, delay, reverb. Um, it sounds really nice and it kind of sounds not like me at all. Um, but it is me, it's just me recording a very long, like, uh, that kind of thing, a very long ah uh sound. And I've done the same thing here, but I actually um, kind of rose in um, in pitch for myself. We have this riser here. Now, something I often do is um, when I'm sound designing something and I want to kind of get a feel for, for how the sound evolves over time is that I try to make it with my mouth, whatever I have in my, my head. And sometimes uh, what I end up doing is just using that sound. And that's what happened here. Um, so this is what it sounds like. And uh, it sounds really cool because of the, the LFO tool here doing its uh, gating thing. 
um, but if we turn it off you can just hear that it's me just you know rising in pitch and uh, really trying my hardest uh, to hit the higher note towards the end um, so yeah together with some delay reverb and the sidechain compression that actually sounds pretty good um, so those were the main elements of the track. Um, I'll quickly run down the mastering chain here because there's an interesting thing going on. Um, as you can see, normally I use stereo processor dynamics and then we go into the limiter. Uh, but for this track I decided to do two limiters, kind of want to be a bit more squashed than normally. Um, so what I did for this one is um, I have a second limiter and this is just adding drive whenever we are in a drop. Um, so that the drop sounds a little bit louder than, you know, this kick and bass here, which is just a low pass version of what we have here. And because this also has bass in it and, you know, the main leads in it and that kind of stuff, I wanted to still be uh, a bit more impactful when the drop actually hits. Um, so I did that with that limiter there. Um, other than that, there's not really much interesting stuff going on. Um, so yeah, if you like this video, please leave it a like and... Um, if you're new here, feel free to subscribe and uh, I hope to see you next time. Bye bye.